What's up guys, Dave with Miracle Cannon Training here. Got a question I wanna get into here that we received on YouTube the other day that we haven't used for our podcast yet. So um, this was on a video we posted called Car-Based Anxiety and How to Fix It. So this is kind of a long question. Um, so I'm gonna get into the question first, then we're gonna break down that question and kind of discuss some of the nuanced details of it that lead to the problem, right? So this question is from Marcia. Marcia asks, you explained my dog to a T. My puppy is 11 months old tomorrow. Uh, she will be a year old next month. Her dog's name is Piper. She is totally out of control. She already had two trainers and is starting another one on December 4th with PetSmart. She won't let her do her nails and uh, won't let her touch her toys. Uh, there's some kind of grammar issues here, so we're gonna kind of paraphrase some of this. Uh, she'll nibbling, she nibbles her hands and um, has a hard time getting baths. Uh, in her SUV, Piper is out of control. She jewels and spits all over her back passenger windows. She never stops talking unless they're on the parkway or highway. She'll go back and forth in the back seat, loudly barking in our ears. Her husband says that he's going to go deaf at an early age. So when we made an appointment at PetSmart to learn to control her better, because the other two trainers did nothing, they decided to buy a nylon muzzle. They made the decision, um, because their veterinarian recommended it. Uh, she asked if she could trim her nails and she said that that would be fine, but she wouldn't even let her touch uh, the nails and was trying to bite at the poor veterinarian. Um, this kind of goes on and on here. Uh, they start getting into, again, different types of issues they had, biting at ankles. She's been doing this stuff since she was a puppy and basically just has a whole slew of issues that they're running into. And the dog is pretty young. So basically breaking down this question here, the biggest thing they were saying was, uh, this was again on the car-based anxiety video I posted, was the major issues that they're having in the car. But I'd like to outline all of the issues they're having as a whole that are leading to this issue. So. A lot of times when we have dogs that are in a position where they're freaking out in the car, right? They're freaking out at the vets. They're freaking out in the house from overstimulation issues and biting at everything, right? They're actively trying to bite you over handling related drills. That tells me overall, we can't go in and isolate certain problems, right? Uh, unfortunately, because they've been to multiple trainers before, right? They're trying to go to another one now, but are probably making the wrong decision as far as that's concerned due to... Um, the fact that they're choosing a PetSmart trainer. Again, not that I despise PetSmart or anything by any means, but a lot of times those types of training programs you're gonna sign up for at these kind of big box stores, they're not specialized. They're not people that are honing their craft every day and looking to work through these types of issues in a more comprehensive way. They're typically just pushing off programs that are at a lower cost and that are very accessible to the average public. Right? So I don't think they're gonna find a whole lot of success with these issues. So where do these issues come from? How do we start to work through them, right? We could talk about the car anxiety specifically and break down the issues they're having as far as the dog is pacing all over the place, barking uncontrollably and slobbering all over the windows and stuff. And that's somewhere where we just gotta create some impulse control. We gotta start creating some discipline for those issues of barking, of jumping on the side window, of uh, pacing around all over the place so we can get them to kind of snap out of it, focus in. I've talked about this before, car anxiety, typically as a result of being the one place in the dog's day-to-day -day where there's very little structure and rules, right? So because of it, it's essentially just a glorified uh, free-for-all where they can kind of get away with doing whatever they want, get themselves all spun up moving around back there. So when you start to crack for that, they chill out pretty nicely. But more than anything, this person needs a very comprehensive training program that's going to show them not only how to communicate effectively with the dog through being able to tell the dog no in a way they clearly understand, probably with some sort of e-collar correction, uh, being able to tell the dog yes in a way that they actually understand in addition to that, and then having a handful of commands to try to manage the dog as they're working through all of these individuals individual issues, right? That means when guests are coming over, if the dog is really bad with them, being able to get the dog to hold a bed stay. That means when they take the dog to the vet, decreasing the arousal before they even get into the room by utilizing their commands in the waiting room and making them wait at doors going in and having some accountability behind that so they can focus in better. That means being able to utilize the yes and the no and the obedience commands in general handling drills like uh, like touching paws and manipulating the dog in ways that the vet is going to uh, typically do to them. And overall, 
we need to address everything, right? This isn't a car issue. This is an everything issue. This is a dog does not have training issues. This is a, we have no idea how to communicate effectively with the dog issue. And that's why we're having so many different problems. And I see people fall into this trap where they go from one trainer to the next trainer to the next trainer to the next trainer to the next trainer, looking for this fix of, you know, she mentioned in it at one point, the trainer did nothing, right? I don't necessarily know if that's 100% true. I mean, the trainer may not have done their job as far as giving them the proper information to work through things, but a lot of this comes down to all of the disconnects you're having everywhere and how most people will try to chase one problem at a time, right? We get a lot of people that call us and they're like, you know, I don't want to do the full 10 session program. I don't want to do the four week uh, board and train program. I want to just do like two sessions here. I want to do a one week program so that we could just work on leash walking or we could just work on recall or something like that. And I always explain to them, the reason why we started doing these longer programs exclusively with dogs is because there's no uh, hand selecting what you want, right? Um, there's no kind of going in and uh, a la carte ordering nice leash walking or ordering a good recall or anything like that. It's dog training boils down to a relationship dynamic between you and the animal and then respecting you enough as their leader to understand in any situation you'll let them know what's okay and what's not okay and us having a language established that regardless of what the problem we're having is we can implement strategically in any scenario in our dog's life to get them to focus in on us and have them actually understand what it is we want right um most dogs out there know general commands, right? They understand what down is, what sit is, what come is, all those different things. But unless you have a clearly defined language established in order to actively go in and enforce those commands or reward those commands as you need to, they're never gonna be compliant to those commands in the way that you actually need them to be, right? So all of this is more comprehensive than we think. And when I hear things like this, I hear people that are unfortunately misled down the wrong road of all of these fake solutions to things, right? You search on YouTube today and you can find, how do I get my dog to stop biting the vet? How do I get my dog to come when called? How do I get my dog to do this? How do I get my dog to do that? And you may get an understanding of a basic, how do we teach this to the dog? But unless you're getting a more comprehensive approach of making sure your life is outlined with this dog in a way where the dog believes you so you can actually use that training, it's not gonna get you very far. So when you're looking for trainers, look for trainers that are gonna give that comprehensive approach to you, obviously. Take some accountability as far as it's not always just the trainer's fault with this kind of stuff. You have to strive to better understand how to have that relationship with your dog. And then obviously when you're having issues like this, make sure that you get a handle on them immediately. It sounds like this person is at least seeking out help. I just wish that they would obviously be looking in a little bit better of a place for that help because I don't think they're gonna find a lot of success doing the things that they're currently doing. Um, this is the kind of stuff that over time, the dog's a year old and these are some major issues that she's seeing. This is the kind of stuff that over time gets dogs put down, right? This is what gets dogs returned to the shelter and gets into this constant rotation of just going from kennel to kennel to rescue to rescue to home to return to home to return. And uh, it's a it's a fucking shitty life for them, you know, and if right when we get dogs, we really understood how this stuff should work and we really understood that disconnect between the, the human and canine relationship. And we took the steps necessary to create that relationship built on structure, built on respect, built on a mutual understanding of what we need. Uh, we wouldn't have so many of these problems long term. So I uh, just wanted to break that question down. Whenever I get things like that, I always say this is not about I'm going to give her the magic pill to fix these problems. This, this, this person likely needs uh, a really good trainer to help guide them and walk with them down this path. Um, but it's a really good training opportunity for me to continue to push that point of what's really necessary in that human canine relationship and the accountability as owners and as trainers and the responsibility that we have in order to make that work. So, um, obviously if you guys have questions, continue asking them. I really like breaking these things down for you guys. Um, but aside from that, we'll catch you guys on the next video and uh, hope you liked it.